So I wanted to come on here and uh, do this video, and this is going to end up probably being quite, quite a long one, more of a podcast, if anything. Um, but I had a quite the interaction with um, a certain individual uh, on Reddit. Uh, who actually a couple of different individuals, frankly, um, over the whole, you know, election thing. And this uh, particular subreddit was the, uh, was one of the trans subreddits that I'm part of. And somebody had basically made some mention about how, you know, they're voting and yada, yada, yada. And I chimed in by basically saying that I'm not voting for genocide or genocide or fascist A or fascist B. I actually care about the greater humanity, not just my own social issues and first world as privileges. And I actually ended up linking uh, a couple of my videos as well as a couple of videos of um, my comrade uh, Dark Snovia's videos to uh, to the thing. And I said that I doubt that anybody will watch these because you probably don't care and don't want to listen to us tankies, but whatevs. And so somebody who claims to be a communist, a leftist, even though they then go on to claim that they're an anarchist, which is, you're going to find out is all completely laughable because very obviously this person is a liberal, says, I understand why you may not consider preventing, uh, may, why you may not consider preventing trans genocide a positive thing, but just realize there are friends, family, co-workers, you know, that basically they're trying to, you know, appeal to emotion, uh, gaslight, um, saying, I urge you to be an ally or to look into leftist policies or both. And I basically had mentioned down here that I am a leftist, that, you know, that they are the ones that, that they're a lib liberal masquerading as one revolutionary socialist, communists and anarchists, you know, real leftists do not believe in legitimizing the bourgeois democracy. I have been involved in left wing politics and theory in practice for 12 years. Um, being one of those being the fact that I am a Marxist Leninist for the last 12 years, and at least for the, half of that time, probably a Maoist third worldist. Um, and yes, I'm also a trans woman. I am queer and I am autistic. So I definitely tick all the boxes of everything that fascists hate. I am, I, or as I jokingly say, I am every conservative's worst nightmare. So I know what's at stake and I choose to fight for it and not leave it in the hands of some genocidal bureaucrat. I also mentioned to this person that, uh, this, that essentially their response is a gaslighting fallacy. That's, uh, that not voting is a de facto vote for someone else. And that, uh, and, and that it's delusional, manipulative, and selfish behavior by a self-indulgent narcissistic cultist, i.e. Blue Maga. And I asked, where is the red line? Where do we stop and realize that both people are, or both parties are not going to protect us forever and that they're not, no, neither one of them is any different. Hell, many of them don't give a shit about us now. I'm not the one collaborating with Nazis. Siding with liberalism is. It is a right-wing ideology. The only difference is that conservatives are actually honest about it, while the other pretends that they actually give a shit while throwing us under the bus behind closed doors. The only way to truly free ourselves is through revolutionary praxis, educating others, and learning to fight. As Mao had said, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun, and that is something that every communist you know needs to come to terms with come to accept so if you call yourself commie cactus or you call yourself any form of an actual leftist you need to come to grips with that political power grows out of the barrel of a gun there is no other way to sugarcoat it uh he and he was right i voted since 2010 
and it hadn't gotten any better with either party. I came to, to know that they were the same and that all the while I kept hearing people say that this is the most important election of our lives and then rinse and repeat every four years. We do. Uh, when do we stop saying this and realize that every election is going to be the most important of our lives and actually realize that it's time to put an end to the charade? So, um, and yes, there's going to be typos because as you can rightfully imagine, I was quite annoyed and frustrated um, because these people just don't seem to get it. They they are so concerned about what's going on in their own little bubble, in their own, you know, bubble of first world privilege, that they don't ever stop to look outside of what's going on in our own country. And we're going to see proof of that in a few. Um, so let me move on to the next one here, if I can zoom out all right there we go um yeah they basically said a vote for um uh third party is is a direct for is a direct vote for trump no it's actually it's not even an indirect vote um the, uh, I'm sorry you aren't a fan of us, but it doesn't mean we deserve to die for it. It's already quickly. So they were basically responding to somebody who was uh, in else in the chat, who, by the way, was not saying at all that they weren't they weren't supportive of trans people. They're just saying that, hey, the you know, what about the, the genocide that's going on? You know, all that sort of stuff. And then they, they fixated on that being like, well, do you want Trump? No. Where in the hell did they say that? Where in the hell does do any of us say that? Where in the hell do you get that from? How does that translate in your mind that, well, I'm not voting because there's, you know, for this person or that person because, you know, genocide, Palestine. They're like, well, do you want Trump? How, it's like, am I speaking a different language? How did that translate to you in that way? And that's exactly, the, that's one of the biggest problems of Blue Maga. And a lot of these individuals that are, that that have hopped on the, the, the Harris train, that were former, largely for, former Bidenists and now Harris supporters, and will now accuse you of everything from being um, transphobic, uh, being racist and misogynistic slash sexist, because, you know, she's a woman, she's a woman of color. So therefore, you know, you're not supporting her. You're, you're sexist and racist. And no, like it has nothing to do with her gender. It has nothing to do with her race. And it certainly has nothing to do with the trans community or the gay community or anything like that. It is because of her her policies, or should I say that her lack of policies or any cohesive sort of solutions to anything. And specifically in relation to her, you know, her and the Biden administration's opinions on Gaza where where yeah where are we yeah where, where is where, where is the red line well do you want trump that's not what we're talking about and that and no it's i'm not i don't want trump i don't want harris either what part of that is not clicking so yeah and so basically they go on this whole thing about how you know voting for third party is voting for trump or it's voting for the kill you're you're essentially killing trans people no we're not and quite frankly again this is a appeal to emotion this is fear mongering this is manipulative gaslighting this is narcissistic behavior so i said once again this is a fallacy Voting third party is not a vote for the other side. It's not like it deletes votes from one candidate and raises it for another. 
And frankly, our vote doesn't matter anyway because of the Electoral College, i.e. America's oligarchical, you know, plutocratic sort of system that we call, an, you know, an election that we call a democracy. Um, these representatives, they, they these delegates, they could literally cast a vote for whoever they want. They don't have to vote for who the people vote for. Like, for example, if, say, California said, hey, we, you know, we're going to, we kind of tilt a little bit more towards wanting Trump, that, that probably wouldn't happen. But just as an example, but the delegates pr prefer Harris, which in that situation is going to be more realistic because most electoral delegates are going to be more for Harris, but I, I'm getting off track here. They could still vote for Harris and not vote for Trump, even though the people say wanted Trump in that particular state, because they are not bound to the people's will. They do. They are held to no standard of that, which is why I say that America's elections, its whole democracy, it's it's a joke. It, 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 it's not an it's not a democracy. It's an oligarchy. It's a plutocracy. It's, you know, to some degree, it's even a kleptocracy. It's, you know, it's definitely a corporatocracy. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's just not it's not a democracy. It, it you know, an electoral college is is an old system that was started, you know, by a bunch of white land a bunch of rich white landowners and where only like a certain percentage of the population could vote and they wanted to and so and they have created a system that essentially reflect it reflected that and still reflects that america is not a democracy it is still very much run by rich people by rich you know landowning people so, okay, yeah, poor white men can vote, uh, black people can vote, women can vote, doesn't really matter at the end of the day. That's why at the end of the day, you know, they those concessions were still made. It wasn't for some greater, you know, good or, you know, it was because A, societal norms change, and also because they have an they have a a system that essentially still caters to that old essentially to that old you know to that old way of of life anyway so it doesn't matter the electoral college do, you know is going to still favor keeping the it, its main idea is to keep the the bourgeois state or in this case estate alive and anything that is a threat to that, i.e. somebody who wants to, I don't know, create a dictatorship, um, is a threat to that. So, yeah, at the end of the day, what, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you vote for. It doesn't matter if you don't vote. Because at the end of the day, it's not we the people that actually get to decide anyway. So... Then this person goes on to say, well, what about uh, the ongoing genocide? And uh, this person responds back by saying, what about the genocide of trans people? So once again, we are jumping back to, you know, uh, it's like, you know, well, what about the genocide? Well, do you want Trump? I'm asking about the genocide. I'm not talking about Trump. Well, what about the genocide against trans people? We're not talking about that. I mean, technically we are, but what I'm trying to say is that in the when we say that we're against the genocide in Gaza and you're turning it around about trans people, and I get it, this is a trans subreddit, but the point being made here is that it, it and I really... I don't want to go here, but I'm going to go here. Let's replace 
Palestinian, the word Palestinians with trans people or just, you know, yeah, let's just put, replace it with, with trans people. So you have, you know, the Zionists committing a genocide against Palestinians, but let's change that to trans people. The Zionist state, or in this case, we'll just say Israel, is committing a genocide against trans people. And the U.S. is still, obviously, nothing changes. They're still supporting Israel, blah, blah, blah. Are you still going to vote for Kamala Harris because, oh, it's going to make things better for trans people in the United States, which it's not. It really isn't. Um, or, do you, you know, do you want Trump? Like, are you still going to be okay still voting for some, you know, somebody who you think is somehow going to make things better for trans people, even though she literally hasn't had any policy showing that she gives a flying rat's ass about it? Um, or are you, you know, you going to choose to take a stand and be like, well, no, but what about the trans people over in, you know, in Palestine? What about them? And they're going to be like, well, what about the trans people in our country? You see how that, that comes off as very, as very centristic, like very Eurocentristic in this case, because it's America. You see how first world that sounds? where you're more concerned about what's going on in your country, but just fuck what's going on, just, but fuck what's going on in another country, right? You know, genocide is apparently okay in that country, but no, we can't have that here. Genocide is genocide is genocide. It doesn't matter who it is it doesn't matter if it's trans people or gay people or muslims or pagans it doesn't matter if it's against arabs or black people a genocide is a genocide and you should make a be taking a stand against that it's like, well, I do feel bad about what's going on, but, you know, we got to focus on... No, I, I don't accept that as an answer. Because if you because basically saying that means you're saying that, you know, I, I don't like what's going on, but I'm going to let this genocide keep going on anyway, because, well, what can I do about it? You can not vote or you can, you know, actually like we can come together as a group of people and realize the system does not represent us whatsoever and that we that, that we need to stop what's going on in another country, you know, or force, you know, force change, even if it is through, you know, armed rebellion by making those changes by basically saying this you're admitting that you're that you are perfectly okay with what is going on in another country and that they and, and yeah and, and that you're perfectly okay with with voting for this to continue that you're okay with perpetuating a system that lets this continue yeah. both candidates want the warriors overseas but only one will swiftly implement one here and now okay first of all yes they do um do you not think that kamala harris will not engage in some sort of war biden certainly did you know he Basically, we sent 4,000 troops to isn't real to aid in a genocide. We have sent troops to commit genocide. Committed troops to commit genocide. Let's put it that way. 
do you not think that Kamala Harris would do the same or is going to do the same by provide continue to provide weapons or money to isn't real? Because she is. Her administration, or let me say, the administration she's part of, her fellow Democrats, everybody has made it very clear that A, they do not give a crap about pro-Palestinian voices and that um, that uh, we're on the menu, essentially, um, and that they have no interest in stopping what's going on over there. The Biden administration quite literally came out and said that isn't real has a right to kill civilians. They literally said that. And yet these are the people you want to keep in power. And no, I'm not saying that it's going to be different under Trump because yes, Trump is going to do Trump things. The they're fascists. They're going. They're going to do. Fascists are going to fash. But when, but the fascists aren't going to. Aren't just fashing on the Trump side. They are going to do the same thing on the Democratic side. Just because one side is way more open with their fascism does not make the other less. The lesser of two evils is really the lesser of fa- the lesser of two fascists. One is just socially fascist that actually pretends like they give a shit when they really don't. And the other is just more open about it. The one thing that I will at least give credit to the, to you know right-wing zealots like you know the Trumpers At least they're fucking honest about it. But liberals, you know, they they're very they're very hush about it because at the end of the day, they want your vote. They want you to continue to participate in this charade, this fucking circus act that we call a democracy. So, yeah, of course, they're, you know, of course, that's how, you know, they're going to be. But. It doesn't make them any less fascist. They are still fascists. Liberalism is just a moderate version of that. You know, that is what we've said. That that is what we've been saying for the longest time. And by continuing to support that, by continuing to side with that, by continuing to make excuses for them, you are siding with fascism. I'd actually like to um, read that passage from uh, Mao. Where was it exactly? I know it's in here somewhere. Anyway, but basically it's uh, combat liberalism and um, uh, let's see, I think it's under that one. Um, But yeah, it's combat liberalism and it is, um, oh, here it is. We stand for active ideological struggle because it is the weapon for ensuring unity within the party and the revolutionary organizations in the interests of our fight. Every communist and revolutionary should take up this weapon, but liberalism rejects ideological struggle and stands for unprincipled peace, thus giving rise to a decadent Philistine attitude and bringing about political degeneration in certain units and individuals in the party and the revolutionary organizations. So... Basically, what we what we're getting at is that it's important to fight back against liberal elements, and that is what we that is what we emphasize, because by continuing to vote for 
essentially fascist A or fascist B, you're no more, you're, you're still voting, you're, you're still complicit in fascism. You're still collaborating with fascists. If there is to be a revolution, there must be a revolutionary party. Without it, without uh, without a revolutionary party, without a party built on Marxist-Leninist uh, revolutionary theory and the revolutionary style, it is impossible to lead the working class and the broad masses of the people. A revolution is not a dinner party. It cannot be so refined, so leisurely and gentle, so temperate, kind, courteous, restrained, and magnanimous. A revolution is an insurrection, an act of violence by which one class overthrows another. The enemy will not perish of himself, neither will the reactionaries nor the aggressive forces of imperialism in stepping down from the stage of history of their own accord. Whoever sides with the revolutionary people is a revolutionary. Whoever sides with imperialism, feudalism, and bureaucratic capitalism is a counter-revolutionary. And whoever sides with the revolutionary people in words only, but acts otherwise as a revolutionary in speech. Now, this is what basically Connie Cactus, the person in this, is doing. They pretend to be a leftist they claim to be a leftist in in practice and you know in word but yet in action they actually are siding with fascists this person is very obviously a revolution a revolutionary in word only and in this case we could even make the argument counter-revolutionary as they essentially collaborate with well what is bureaucratic capitalism you are still cited, you are still actively supporting a a bourgeois, you know, bourgeois candidate. Even though that bourgeois candidate is, you know, not a right wing psychopath, doesn't mean that that she's any less of a fascist. So yeah, that's why I told this person, you're not a leftist, real do not legitimize a bourgeois democracy they care more about uh, they, they care about more than just one marginalized community we care about all walks of life and how best to support them by voting for one genocidal tyrant over the other you're complicit in the holocaust you very clearly cared little about because of your own selfish first world interests please stu and then i basically said you know please study third world as theory i'd start with mao's combat liberalism basically Everything that I had mentioned pre in the last like 10 or so minutes where the, where it's like even if, like take the take out the word Palestine, put in trans and then, you know, apply the genocide against Palestinians to the trans to a trans, you know, a community of a huge, you know, population of trans people. Let's just magically make that. I you get it. And so basically my my point about that was is that you know you care more about you know one marginalized community you only care about what's going on in this country but you care little about what's going on overseas because you're too centered around your own selfish first world interests which is why i said this person is not a real leftist and yet they're trying to say that I'm not the real leftist and, in fact, going quite so far as to say that um, that I am, uh, that at least uh, I don't actively give us up to the fascists. But so basically, not only saying that I'm not the left, real leftist, but they're the real leftist because harm reduction is the move. So if you... you uh, You've no interest in protecting us. At least don't actively give us up to the fascists. So she's trying to say that essentially what they are trying to say is that I'm a fascist because I won't vote for fascism. Make it make sense. Please, anybody watching this, please make it make sense. You know, um, 
I basically had, um, um, but yeah, in response to my, in response to this, uh, sh they basically said, I'm not a liberal, I'm an anarchist and someone who is anti-project 2025. And I said, uh, you know, that's cute. I said that, uh, uh, they're, um, I called them an anarcho Bidenist simp essentially. And I reminded them that project 2025 has been ongoing slowly, but surely for decades, it's nothing new. It's just that in the case of, you know, the GOP, they're just not hiding it anymore. Um, and then this person responds by essentially just saying, shut up pretty much. They're just saying, you know, hold your tongue when speaking to me, uh, you know, hold your tongue while speaking to an actual leftist. So like, shut, you know, shut up and, and, and listen to me because I'm so important and you, you know, and, and you're addressing a real leftist. No, I'm addressing, addressing a freaking rad lib in uh, old Troid at best. I'm addressing a, a person who, with a very, with the, their own self-indulgent delusions and their own narcissistic behavior, who has very much been captivate, captivated by the cult. And I said, and so I, and I pointed this out saying, uh, you know, uh, hold your, uh, hold your tongue when speaking to an actual left, to an actual leftist. No, you're not a leftist. You're a rab, rad lib of pretender. I am a communist. I am a Marxist Leninist and Maoist third worldist. I am a real leftist. I mentioned that I, you know, my other comrades who are leftists and who are actually concerned about their comrades, their their families, their friends that are in these other countries, they are real leftists, that the commie cactus is a selfish liberal who only cares about what's going on in America, is what I meant by here, what's going on in America. You don't care about anyone else but yourself, so you try to get the tanky to stop talking by doing what you know best, which is gaslighting, manipulation, shutting down the conversation, essentially. Uh, through appeal to emotion. I'm sorry, but it's tired and desperate. You're the one that is voting for fascists. This is a collaboration. Voting for liberalism is still a vote for fascism. It's still a vote for genocide. You seriously believe the Dems are going to do anything for us because they aren't. Biden sure hasn't. Harris won't either. The par power is also in the hands of uh, Democratic elitists, many of whom are also transphobic or don't care. We also have a 6-3 SCOTUS, so yeah, have fun with that. And again, it brings me back to this whole thing where it's like, do you actually really think that they give any fucks about helping us? Because we don't. What's in it for them? We don't really serve any sort of interest except, well, just keep giving me your vote. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll see if what I can do. Just keep giving me your vote. Just keep voting for blue because, you know, we're the good people, right? And then continue to do nothing. You know, what if, if they actually get, gave a damn, if we actually mattered to them, they would have instituted like a federal law stating, hey, we need to, you know, we need to respect the health care of trans people. We need to respect this. We need to do that. You know, we, you know, they have a right to go to the bathroom of the gender they identify as. They have a right to exist. They have a right to, you know, they have a right to this. Anti drag bans are transphobic. We can't do that. That's discriminatory. If they wanted to, they could, you know, if they, because they did have both houses just a couple of years ago. I believe they lost it in uh, 2022. They could have done it during Biden's whole entire, like, first year, actually almost first two years. They could have passed anti-discrimination policies, you know, to protect trans people, to protect, protect trans youth, but they didn't. In fact... They have actively thrown us under the bus by essentially saying that, yeah, trans youth uh, should not, uh, you know, that, that essentially they shouldn't be given 
um, uh, the puberty blockers and they shouldn't be uh, essentially throwing trans youth, trans youth health care under the bus. They've done nothing to actively stop the, the, the drag bans in these other, these other states. J maybe a few judges have done that, but they haven't. Um, meanwhile, things continue to get worse in a lot of states like Florida, like Texas, like Tennessee, like Missouri, even other places, Idaho. They continue get, to get worse for trans people. And what has the Biden administration done? Not, not a fucking thing. What's, what's the Harris's, the Harris campaign's policy on that? Not a goddamn thing. They could have, and if they were to somehow miraculously take both the House and the Senate, which they're not going to, in fact, I wouldn't honestly be a bit surprised if they don't even lose the Senate as well, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to, to protect us. They can't protect us. And quite frankly, they have no interest in it. And even if they did, they won't do it forever. Because, quite frankly, many people within the Democratic Party either are very, you know, you know, indifferent, if not just are completely transphobic. They just don't express it very highly, except for maybe a couple of them. But most of them don't really care. Most of them, you know, and that's why they don't do it. They, It's... So, yeah, do you think any of them are actually going to do anything to help us? No. And if you do think that somehow having Harris is going to make a shred of difference to the trans community, you're delusional and you need to really get over yourself because it, it, that that is a complete fantasy. That they're, they're not going to help you. So... Yeah, it, it's it, it, just, yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically that's what I went on the whole thing about that. And, uh, but yeah, that essentially the, the power is in the hands of the legislature. And even if we were to get like a, you know, something passed, something could get, you know, challenged and it's going to end up getting either picked up by a 6-3 conservative court or passed down to whatever the lowest court before that was. And so, yeah, and it, it's probably going to be the same thing, even if it was reversed and it was a liberal court. It's not going to make a shred of difference. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, del it's delusional to think that it's going to make any shred of difference. And then anyway, they go, uh, I, and so, yeah, I go on this whole thing about that. And then they're like, well, I'm not reading that. I just encourage you to support the, uh, to support the genocide. Um, I just encourage you not to support the genocide of trans people if you can find it in yourself. And I was basically like, yeah, I'm not reading all that as typical first world left of the typical first world leftist, not willing to, uh, uh, to read or be educated because it might actually challenge their liberal delusion and fallacy. You're so quick to call us tankies and theory nerds. Y'all really are no different than MAGA. There's no reason to continue talking to you people if you're that far gone. And in relation, they uh, had actually, to my thing, calling them a Bidenist, they had uh, wrote this and then deleted it saying, Bidenist isn't a thing. Biden isn't running and no one likes that senile racist moron. Straw man yourself, just keep your fascist, uneducated ramblings to yourself. So essentially, again, calling me a fascist because I'm not wanting to support fascism. Make it make sense. Um, and this is the thing, like going back to the whole like thing about um, the genocide in uh yeah, the the genocide in Gaza, comparing it to the genocide of trans people, like one of the things that one of the points that I really do want to hammer home here and the reason why I brought it up in the first place is because 
by saying that you're okay with, uh, you know, with a genocide, you know, halfway around the world, you know, or just at, at bare minimum, not seeming to just, just not seeming to give two cares at all. Like if, like if you're okay or just don't seem to give a fuck about a genocide going on across the, the planet, but you're, uh, but you're, but you're not okay with a genocide going on here in America, which is by, by definition, nowhere near in comparison. And it is by nowhere near, you know, the same as what's going on over there. If, but it, a genocide is a genocide is a genocide. And if you're okay with one and not and not okay with the other, then not only are you a hypocrite, but you're a fascist, you're delusional, and frankly, yes, you're mentally ill. And yes, I know that I just basically called the, you know, liberal trans people, the li liberal trans community, mentally ill. That's not to say that you're mentally ill because we are trans. It is to say you're mentally ill for thinking and be, for being so delusional and so evil that you're okay with a genocide over there, but not one here. That makes you an absolute hypocritical, evil monster. And yes, you would be, I would consider you mentally ill for that. And I know, go ahead, cancel me for it. Go ahead and, and, and say that I'm transphobic for saying that. No, in that situation, you would be. Because you are perfectly okay with murder in one country, but not here. If you truly are against genocide, you would be clamoring against what's going on over in, in Palestine. And just because it's not some, just because it's not trans people, which let's also be real here. The majority of that two to 3% of our population of trans people is white. That's not to say that there isn't trans people in our community that aren't you know, black, indigenous, or brown, there are, there are many in, in our community who are. But just like with everything else, white people still make up that majority. And if I had to put any sort of, if I had had to show a perfect example of first worldist white privilege in the trans community, this shit right here is is a shining example of that. Because, you know, fuck those brown people dying over there, right? You know, what you know, what what if this was the native people in our own country who by the way are still being assimilated and and discriminated against and genocided by the United States government, they still are. They're being actively poisoned by whatever means you can think of. Yeah. What What about them? There's definitely, I know, trans native people too. Hell, I'm friends with one of them. But fuck them, right? No, it's all, all about, we, well, we need to protect the, the trans community. We need to protect this community. What about just protecting humanity in general? Like, how about that? How about thinking outside of your privileged position? If we are going to call ourselves leftists, I'm not saying you need to be a third worldist, but I am saying you need to move beyond you need to get over your first worldism you need to get over your first world as privilege 
And quite frankly, for a lot of you, you need to get over your whiteness. Because that right there is a very selfish, narcissistic, and very white privileged, first world is privileged sort of position to take. Because it essentially says, I don't give a fuck about what's going on, you know, outside of my, you know, my protective little bubble. But I don't want this to happen to my, you know, to that. I don't want this to happen because it might threaten that protective layer of my bubble. That same group that you think is going to protect, protect you and that little that little social bubble or that little community bubble that you're part of, or that gender minority bubble in this case are the same people that are destroying other bubbles and destroying other lives. And you can't seem to get that through your heads. And I don't think you want to because you, you don't care. Well, it doesn't affect me. That's halfway around the world, and that, that's one. That's another group. But I'm so concerned about what's going on here. That, that's privilege, because you don't know what it's like to go to sleep at night, wondering if bombs are going to rain down on your house, or your apartment, or that you're going to send your kids to school. And then they're not going to come back. Well, actually, in America, that might actually happen. But the difference is, instead of potentially getting shot, these kids, well, now they can't even really go to school. But when they did, they were at threat of not only sniper attacks and being shot, but being bombed, buried alive by rubble. Oh, and then God forbid they're hurting one of those and go to a hospital because then they have the fear of being killed there too. At least you don't have that sort of threat here. Must be an awful wonderful life to live, you know, being able to go to a hospital and, you know, okay, you might not, might end up with a $90,000 fucking bill for aspirin, but you, you know... I'm exaggerating, of course, but yeah, the U.S. healthcare system is so fucked up itself. But at least you're not going to have to worry about that hospital falling down on you because it was bombed. How about you take a little bit of insight and start thinking about something else other than then your goddamn f first world is privilege. Because I guarantee you, whatever dystopia you think that this, you know, that, that's essentially um, going to make or break this election, that's going to happen, it is nothing compared to the horrors and the struggles that other people are facing right now in Palestine. It's just in this case, you just choose not to, you just care not, to, not, not, you either just don't care about them in general, or you just prefer to just plug your ears, close your eyes and just sing la la la, you know, and just pretend like it's not happening. So, I'd like to move on to this A2 rhombus person really quick, um, since I'm already quite far into this podcast. Um, and one of the things that they this person was saying was, okay, then go overthrow the fucking government. But until then, you're being performative on Reddit. If you're going to refuse to participate in the system... Uh, then actively tear it down or get the fuck out. True leftism is doing anything you possibly can to stop fascism. No, it's not 
it, it yeah yes it's doing whatever you possibly can to stop fascism that does not include continuing to perpetuate a you know or lend legitimacy to a system that is illegitimate to a system that does not represent the people or does not represent that revolutionary praxis so yeah again it's a revolution is not a dinner party it's not a it if there is no revolution or if there is to be a revolution there has to be a revolutionary party this neither one of these parties are revolutionary um revisionism or right opportunism is a bourgeois trend of thought that is even more dangerous than dogmatism the revisionists the right opportunists pay lip service to marxism they too attack dogmatism however what they are really attacking is the quintessence of marxism they oppose or distort materialism and dialectics oppose or try to weaken the people's democratic dictatorship and the leading role of the party and oppose or try to weaken socialist revolution in the country there are still a number of people who vainly hope to restore the capitalist system and fight the working class on every front, including the ideological one. Moreover, the right-hand men in this struggle are the revisionists. And that is exactly what these people are doing. That, you know, or at least that's what uh, commie cactus is doing. You know, you essentially pay lip service to Marxism, you basically appropriate Marxist idealism, or just in general, at least claim that you're a leftist, yet basically oppose it in every other regard. You, again, are revolutionary in word, but not in, but not in practice. And that's the point. that's that's the point i'm trying to make is the fact that yeah you're not is that you're at, at most a revolutionary in word only and a counter-revolutionary at worst so yeah the seizure of and oh and this one applies quite frankly to this part here the seizure of power by armed force, the settlement of the issue by war, is the central task and the highest form of revolution. Without armed struggle, neither the proletariat nor the people would have any standing at all. It would be impossible for the revolution to triumph. And yet, go ahead and overthrow the fucking government, but until you do, being performative, you're being performative on Reddit. That's because we need a mass movement, and you are kind of in the way of that because you will not seem to get it. You will not seem to move beyond this and try to help us. Instead, you are trying to actively stand in the way of us actually doing something. And then you're trying to tell us, well, well then you go overthrow that government then. Yeah, good luck with that. Try One person or a few schlubs carrying out an attack on a government is going to end poorly. We need the masses to actually wake up and actually help and, and join us. None of, but none of these people are willing to do that. The problem is the problem is are people like this, not Marxists, not not the not anarchists, not Demarchists, and not revolutionary socialists. The problem is liberals like these two. And then, uh, and the problem is these people thinking that, you know, oh, well, we can just vote our way to, to revolution. You can't vote in revolution. You do not change the system. It changes you. And even if you do somehow manage to get some sort of revolutionary candidate, you know, in there, they're not going to affect revolution. They're not going to enact revolution. 
it's going to change them. They're going to become revisionist and reactionary. They're going to be absorbed by the system. So, no, it's not going to do a fucking bit of difference. You recognize that we cannot revolt and resist without education. No, we can't. We can't. In fact, um, as we used to say, the rectification movement is a widespread movement of Marxist as education. Rectification means the whole party studying Marxism through criticism and self-criticism. Well, the problem is, is that many of you can't even accept the basic bits of criticism or be even willing to accept that anything is actually wrong, that it's perfect, that this is the only, the, the, like the only way, essentially, to do it. We can certainly learn more about Marxism in the course of the rectification movement. It's an arduous task to ensure a better life for the several hundred million people and to build our economically and culturally backward country into a pro prosperous and powerful one with a high level of culture. It is precisely in order to be able to shoulder this task more competently and work better with all non-party people who are actuated by high ideals and determined to institute reforms that we must conduct rectification movements both now and in the future and constantly rid ourselves of whatever is wrong. So, yeah, like, again, like, it's one of those things where, like, education, yes, we need to educate people, but more importantly, we need to understand that revolution is not a dinner party. It's not just some fucking, you know, thing where, oh, hey, let's, hey, guys, let's just, let, let's, you know, let's uh, do something fun today. Let, let's, uh, let's go overthrow the government. Yeah, that, that's going to end poorly. That It's not just some thing you can do on a whim. And it's certainly not something that just a few fucking people on the internet can do. Believe me, if I, if, if I could overthrow the government single-handedly, wave a wand, whatever, I would do that. I would have done that a long time ago. But that's not how it works. And the fact that the, these people think that that their argument is, oh, well, if you want revolution so much, just go do it. It's not how it works. It, it, it's, you know, this complete, you know, it, it's basically no different than than conservatives who scream, well, if you don't like this country, you can get out or if you like, you know. You know, basically, like, why would I want to leave the country that I'm from, that I was born in, and that I've lived in, and that I've got a life in? I'm trying to change the country for the better, and I'm trying to get others to follow. But the problem is, is that you can lead a, a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So, yeah, maybe vote to prevent the guy from taking office who actively wants to ma make uh, both educa uh, um, education and organization illegal. As if the Dems won't. They literally put snipers on the roof of college campuses during pro-Palestine protests. That's intimidation. That's a message. But, oh, I'm sure you'll make the argument of, oh, it wasn't live ammunition. Yes, it was. Or, well, under Trump, they'll actually shoot. If the protests became enough of a threat to, to their power and interests, the Democrats would do the same thing, or they would, or they would have done it. You are delusional to think that they're that these two are really that different. I'm going to continue to do uh, what do that, whatever it, whether it's illegal or not. And real leftists would too, which is why we don't care who wins, because to us, our activity is all illegal. Just to what extent? Are you willing to go? And that's kind of a perfect analogy of that. It's literally to basically say that, hey, like, um, like, it's a perfect analogy to, to, to kind of almost end on this video. I got one more thing to go through. But yeah, it, it's, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, even though it's not like illegally legal like it's not like me posting this on youtube is going to get me you know get my door kicked in or anything like that and black bagged but it's still you know but basically being a communist and 
being active, you know, with some of the people that I am involved with, some of which is underground, some of it is illegal activity. And it's one of those things where it's one of the, uh, where it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you know, it's still something that is, while not illegally legal, is still passively tried to be shut, is trying to be censored and curtailed and suppressed and done in other means. It's, you know, it, it's frankly just not a popular thing to be a, to be a, be a leftist. And I mean a real leftist, a Marxist, a anarchist, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not hip, you know, it's not, you know, it's not lit as the kids say these days. And quite frankly, that's something that we, that yes, we accept. It's also a criticism that we make because quite frankly, it is our own personal failure that we cannot reach to the higher masses. But part of that problem is also that the masses don't want to be reached. In this case, a lot of people who are unwilling to give up, you know, their first worldism, who are willing to give up, you know, to, you know, move beyond their whiteness. So, and then that's how you get libs like this. And I, I wanted to make a note here because this person was also uh, commenting on a few other posts. Um, yeah, would you rather put a bandage on the bullet wound or let yourself bleed out and die? It doesn't really matter because either way, you've been shot. And quite, and you know, and like that's a piss poor comparison. Like the point is, is that, yeah, America, the point is, is that you've been shot. The point is that America is a shithole that's with a broken system. And, uh, you know, America is both sides are actively supporting genocide. You know, so it doesn't really matter. You've still you've still been shot. You're still bleeding regardless. So what is it? What does it matter? You know, whether you put that bandage on or not, you're still bleeding. You still need medical attention. You still need a solution to the problem. You know, so, yeah, bad analogy. Um, if all you're doing is not voting, that won't be enough. If you're doing more than that, you can uh, just do that while still voting. So, yeah, you you can go. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah, if you're just, you know, you know, um, if you're not voting, that's not doing enough. But if you're, you know, um, if you're, uh, if, if you're doing, you know, your revolution, if you're a revolutionary, well, that's still not enough. You still need to vote. So, okay. So somehow revolution is when being a left. So leftism is when we vote for fascism. Okay. Um, or leftism is still is when we still vote for fascism because reasons you can just still do that while voting uh for uh for the one that will cause the le least harm so yeah again just vote for vote for fascism but just vote for the the least fascist one okay I'm convinced a lot of people like you only do this to look good. You won't try try and stop the two-party system. You won't mention it again for the next five years, and all you'll do is choose the morally right thing to do. No, we are always actively saying, you know, trying to actively cr providing criticism. We are always actively fighting against the bourgeois state. We are always trying to stop the two-party system. In fact. Right, frankly, we would like to get rid of this whole fucking circus act altogether and actually implement a people's democracy, or as Mao puts it, the people's democratic dictatorship, or the dictatorship of the proletariat, as it was. 
you, you know, you will mention it again for the next five years. No, we are pretty act, pr- pretty consistent. Oh, you know, during, you know, before, during, and after any election. So no, and all you do is choose the morally right thing to do. Yes, we do do that, and we do that consistently and often. Because, yeah, I don't see what the problem with that is. We choose the morally right thing to do, which is not support genocide, not support fascism, not support a system that we literally do not believe in. (laughs) Not sure what you're not getting. And deciding to not let Trump uh, win and make it worse for Palestine does not make uh, someone a fake leftist. Um, No, it does, because like deciding not to let Trump win and make it worse for Palestine, it it, voting for Harris is, isn't going to make things any better for Palestine. It's not, in fact, it's going to make things worse as well. Voting for Trump will make things worse for Palestine. Voting for Harris will make things worse for Palestine. It doesn't matter who you vote for. I don't know why this is such a, why this is so hard for people to understand letting Trump win just because you would rather vote on your morals instead of your brain does not make you a fake leftist either. You are the same. One of you is just stupid. No, it's like you, uh, because you would rather vote on your morals. Yeah, I would rather vote on my morals and I choose not to vote. I choose not to, I choose to, if you will, say that I have no confidence in the system. I mean, sure, I could go to the, the local ballot office and, and surrender my ballot and say, I have no, uh, no, you know, I have no confidence in this system. And I have done that before, actually. And of course, yeah, I get the funny looks and I get told them like, oh, you just want to take the fun out of this. no. I just am doing it because I don't have any faith in this system. It does not, I don't believe in this system. But then I would get told by people like this that, you know, that by doing this, that I'm just letting Trump win, apparently. Because somehow, you know, one schlub, you know, whose vote doesn't actually matter anyway, because it's decided by rich delegates instead of the actual people somehow that's going to make a difference i guess but yeah it's so yeah i would rather not vote on my morals and not support genocide not support fascism and apparently that 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 doesn't make me a leftist that that apparently just like i guess i should just toss the, the i guess i should just toss this and toss this in the bin guys i'm not a it, it's like apparently you know these fucking people think you know have have uh, have totally proved i'm not a real leftist i guess because you know all that revolutionary praxis all the theory i've i've learned and that i espouse on here none of that really matters because oh i i vote because uh oh i just didn't vote for a fascist apparently and by not voting for for fascist for one form of fascism or the other somehow that makes me a fascist yeah letting trump win will not uh by not voting will not help palestine once again neither will voting for harris it will not help palestine so yeah anyways um so i'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing here there we go so I want to thank you guys if you've made it in this far um, for this Red Pagan Corner podcast, commentary, whatever you want. But yeah, this was again coming from a trans subreddit that I had. And I just felt like I needed to come on here and just speak raw from 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 the heart, from the mind, and just let you guys see what the, what what these people are actually like and you know because i you know don't get me wrong i i love my tra- my fellow trans community 
I want what's best for them. And I definitely, you know, I am an ally. I always have been. But I am not going to vote. I'm certainly not going to vote for, you know, genocide or genocide. I'm not going to vote for one fascist over the other. Because I am a real, real leftist. I am a revolutionary. I'm a Marxist-Leninist and a Maoist third-worldist. A tanky, if you will. You know, I actually do have morals. And those morals is, I'm against genocide. I'm against genocide of all kinds. Not just worried about, you know, my community being exterminated. But also a holocaust that is literally going on halfway around the world. And I am not going to support, you know, a part, not only candidates, but a system that perpetuates that. And certainly, not I'm not going to perpetuate that system that I don't believe in anyway. Because the only system I believe in is the dictatorship of the proletariat, the p true people's democracy. And if that somehow makes me a fascist or selfish because I care about other people and I'm choosing to be against fascist, a fascist system and fascist candidates, then I don't know what to fucking tell you. You know, all I can say is that this is some serious liberal cope. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and I want to thank you all for tuning in. This has been Red Pagan Corner for the Red Pagan Network. Until next time. Thank you for watching. Do you like news and politics from a leftist perspective, true crime, or informational videos on leftist philosophy and pagan belief practices, and would like to support the channel? Please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. Even a few bucks really helps me out. All links are provided in the description like comment and subscribe and share on various social media hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video i put out content regularly so you will always get quite a bang for your buck